do take note that each company, each program, or each account has its own criteria for judging um, when it comes to accepting applicants or employees. So that just means that uh, some companies or accounts may accept only uh, applicants who have excellent English communication skills, while other companies may accept applicants who are able to at least speak proper English and understand English as well. So regardless of that, I think that when you are confident of your English communication skills, and if you have a good command of the English language, you have a big advantage because it will be easier for you to communicate to your foreign clients as well as customers. So if you feel that you're still struggling and you still need more practice, then why not do it? Just practice first before uh, applying for a call center job and at least have that certain degree of confidence with, within yourself and at least you know for yourself that you can already do it. But this is not to say that English communication is the only skill that you need to that you need to have if you want to apply. Of course, there's a whole lot of skills that you need to have to be effective as a call center representative. For this video, I'm only going to focus on the English communication skills. But it's a very broad term. It's a very broad aspect of communication. It's not just uh, the spoken language it can also be written language so say for example you're assigned to a non-voice account you will also be responding to emails in english or you will be providing chat support in english so that's also very important now these are uh what i think are important guidelines and what i personally did to improve my own english communication skills tip number one think english speak english write english uh case in point would be movies with english subtitles so for example you're watching a korean movie or a bisaya movie and then it, it's translated to english there's an english subtitle um, even though you know that the meaning is basically just the same somehow the message the message just gets lost in translation somewhere like the context is very different so eventually eventually how it is to the audience and to the viewers is uh, it will come off as awkward or not really appropriate so i would always suggest to first start speaking first start thinking in english rather and then speak in english and then write in english so that just means that try to avoid um, literally translating Bisaya or Tagalog into English. Like, uh, for us, we're so used to saying, um, Sa English ka na, nahulog ko sa kanal, something like that. So, you will translate that to English. But to be more effective and to be, to be able to practice your English more, try to start thinking in English first so that you don't have to translate it. But, you know, you may ask how should i do that how do i think in english that brings us to tip number two my tip number two is i believe a very effective way which is to read english books read english books even if you're not a reader well i suggest you start loving reading because uh, for sure when you get to the call center you will have a lot of reading to do and you just have to love reading. Now with reading, you will get accustomed to the English language that eventually it becomes your second nature. When you read a book, an English book, uh, you will be able to enhance your English vocabulary. You will have uh, more English words in your arsenal. Do you do you know when, when some people say that I'm running out of words to say. So you're running out of English words to say. That just means that you don't have enough English words in your arsenal. So you better stock up before you get into the battlefield. And I think that even though you know the meaning of the sentences or the words by its context, sometimes it's also important to have a handy dictionary with you 
what I do is I I will just get a dictionary or I will have a thesaurus beside me when I read. And right now, you already have the internet, you already have Google, so you can easily just research for the meaning and the pronunciation of that word. I know it takes a lot of time and it is, uh, it, it somehow disrupts your reading, but if you're doing this for practice, then might as well um, incorporate uh, trying to look for the meaning from the dictionary. Tip number three would be to watch English movies and TV shows, right? So it's a fun way to learn English communication. If you're not into reading that much, then at least um, opt to, to make it a point to watch English movies every now and then or even every day if you can. Uh, because with English movies, um, you will be able to visually observe conversations of the characters because you can you can actually see them right and you will learn conversational language those slang terms or colloquial language informal terms or language that they say that you don't really know because you don't have the same culture uh, for example you're serving american customers then uh, try to start try to start watching movies that ha or try to start watching american movies some some companies have uh, British accounts, so it really depends. But most of what I've encountered are actually American English, so it's very it, it's very important I think because when you are assessing your customers over the phone, you don't really use um, formal language, right? So you don't say uh, "Where art thou, Mister Customer?" when this happened, or "How do I?" How do I help thee with this concern? You are, you're not going to say that to your customer. You will be more conversational and you'll be more natural when you speak with them. So in that case, you'll also be able to pick up some of uh, the habits of the characters and how, how the context of the American culture is in that scenario. Tip number four is to look for an accountability partner or a practice partner. Um, this is one of the activities that are that is usually done inside the training room, but I would always suggest for you to do it even outside the training room or when you are, let's say, already at home, during your lunch, during your break time. If you really are serious with improving your English communication skills, uh, you have to practice. Or let's just say if you're not yet tired. Um, you can you can look for an accountability partner who is willing to help you. So this can be anyone, your friend, significant other, family member, uh, anyone, as long as that person is willing to help you. So what you can do is you can practice specific scenarios. Um, let's just say if you have an idea of how a call will go, then you can practice that. Uh, and if you don't really have any idea at all, then you can just practice speaking in English with your accountability partner so that you will be given feedback and they will, they will be able to point out to you what you're doing well based on their opinion or what you need to improve on. Number five is to record yourself. I always do this because I think it's very effective. So what I do is I just use my smartphone to record my voice. I practice. Um, anything as long as you're speaking in English um, you know when you record your voice it also sounds like your voice over the phone so at least in that way you'll be able to point out to yourself what you're doing well and what you need to improve on um, this is let's just say if you don't have an accountability partner but you have to you have to remember that your voice may sound different when you're speaking with someone face to face or when you are speaking over the phone so it's a good way for you to know your your pace when you speak. Are you going too fast or are you too slow? Do you need to make your voice louder? And you can also you can also determine if your um, breathing is okay because heavy breathing can be heard um, over the phone. So you also have to adjust that part. Um, what else? You can also uh, try to notice your pronunciation, your enunciation. So um, at least you know what to correct for yourself. Or if, uh, if you like, let's just say you have unequals, then you can ask your accountability partner 
to call you or maybe you can call your partner and then you can have a conversation in English. Just practice speaking in English and then your partner can tell you how you sound like over the phone. Or better yet, um, while you are calling, you can. there's an option for you to record your call, right? Um, if you have that option on your phone, then you can also do that so that you can listen to yourself after the call. Um, I believe that's very, very, very effective because I've been doing that um, even now, I still try to record myself just to find out how I sound over the phone. Number six is to practice reading English tongue twisters. I know that Filipino or Tagal tongue twisters are so much fun, but English tongue twisters are also very fun to do. Um, it will allow you to move your mouth muscles because if you notice if you haven't spoken for a long time, it feels awkward to speak because you haven't spoken. But you can do some muscle exercises, uh, something like or like that. Or you can just open your mouth and exercise your whatever muscles you have in your mouth. Um, and tongue twisters can actually do that. If not, then try to read out loud. If not, tongue twisters. Although I suggest really tongue twisters will be good. Read out loud because it will help you uh, it, will, it will help you enhance your pronunciation as well. If you don't know where to get tongue twisters, you can just Google that. It's just one Google away and you can find a lot of English tongue twisters. And last but not the least, number seven is always be open to feedback. For me personally, um, this is one of the best ways to learn and to not repeat the same mistake. When I was still in training, there were a few words that I was very confident that I know the pronunciation, but it turned out that I was very wrong. So it's very embarrassing, right? But when you graciously accept feedback, you're also being open-minded. You're opening your yourself to people who can actually help you. So don't take it personally. Just um, take it as an opportunity to correct your mistakes and to be better in the future. Uh, and if you have an opportunity to correct yourself as well, um, for example, you're speaking and then you you all of a sudden pronounced the word uh, incorrectly, even though you know the right pronunciation, then go ahead and correct yourself. Uh, it's okay to make mistakes, but the most important thing is to be able to correct yourself in the end. So last few reminders before we end this video um always remember that you are applying for a call center job you're not applying to study in a university so what that means is when you apply you're already expected to to be able to speak and understand english don't have that mindset that i will apply for a call center job because i want to to learn how to speak in english um, the company will not hire you because you're still learning. They want someone who already knows how to speak and comprehend English. So I suggest that if you are not yet very confident and you feel that you need more practice, then go ahead and practice first uh, and have, as I've mentioned earlier, um, have that certain level or degree of confidence that you can really say to yourself that I'm already ready to apply. But I'm not discouraging you or I'm not um, discounting your skills or your ability by any means. It's just that um, for me, you would want to be ready when you apply for that call center job. You would want to get it um, if not the first time, at least the second time. But if you don't, then there's always another chance, there's always another try. Just keep trying and just keep making yourself better. Uh, keep practicing the English language and eventually it will be second nature, you will be better and just have faith in yourself. So that's it for today and thank you so much for watching and for listening. I do hope you've learned something from this video. If you like this content, please go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel or like my Facebook page to be updated um, if I publish videos. So see you again next Friday and take care. Bye!